Hey, looks like we're live. Thank you so much for joining us today in my basement. My name is Greg Lewis. I'm the marketing director for Metastock, and today is our weekly market recap. And today's guest is Tim Stratton, and the host is Hunter, Hunter Smith. Sorry, Hunter. Um, we're so uh, grateful to be here. It's been another interesting week in the markets. Uh, today, if you haven't been to this before, it's basically just a casual sit down with uh, a market expert uh, discussing what's gone on this week, what's likely to happen next week, you know, what can we do about all this craziness, and uh, the best way to proceed. Uh, today's presentation is provided solely in about five minutes on YouTube. So if you want to participate, um, well, if you're here, all you need to do is chat. While I'm on this topic, as you're coming in today, go ahead, please, please just say hello and let us know where you're coming from. We also love to hear from our guests. Also, I think today, really quick, I'll go ahead and play uh, a video for you right now. If I can find it, I'm gonna play it. Yes, I am. I can't find it. There it is. Okay, playing now. Nope, no sound. Let's try it again. Why am I not getting sound on that? Oh, asked right. all the time, what is Metastock? Hi there, Greg Lewis, Metastock Software. As the marketing director, I get asked all the time, what is Metastock? How can I help my trades? Well, stick around for about three minutes and I'll tell you. Metastock is an award-winning software and data package that has been helping traders for over 35 years. Simply put, Metastock is a tool for traders like you to analyze the markets. Metastock helps you take the guesswork out of trading by offering a methodical, systematic approach to some key questions all traders come up against. Questions like, how do I decide which securities to trade when there are literally thousands to choose from? Which strategy should I use and how do I test that strategy before spending my first trading dollar? When should I enter and exit a trade? How can I effectively manage the securities I'm interested in? And of course, how do I know where prices will go next? At the core of Metastock are the power tools. The power tools give professional grade analysis tools to private traders like you and me. You can scan the market with the Metastock Explorer to filter and sort securities that show buy and sell signals based on your criteria. The Metastock System Tester lets you test most strategies through a process called backtesting, which allows you to see how your strategy would have performed over time. You can easily manage and monitor the securities you are interested in with Quote Center. Quote Center lets you sort on a variety of criteria to view the data that's important to you. Then just double click on a security if you want to see its chart. With the Metastock Forecaster, you can even take advantage of patented technology to view probable future prices. If you're an options trader, you're going to love Metastock's OptionScope. OptionScope puts all the critical info at your fingertips, displaying sortable, customizable, color-coded options data, including the Greeks. And Metastock has solutions for traders of all levels and interests. If you're just getting into trading, you will appreciate the education offered by our many built-in systems. In addition to pointing out buy and sell signals, Metastock explains how they work in an easy to follow commentary window. Metastock has built-in systems based on popular strategies like MACD, Bollinger Bands, Turtle Trading, Candlesticks, and many more. Metastock even has the very popular and exclusive Rahul Mohindar Oscillator System, or simply known as the RMO. And as you become a more experienced trader, Metastock grows with you. Advanced analysts will enjoy the comprehensive list of trading systems and indicators, and the ability to build their own systems. And if you're a day trader, you can't do better than Zenith, the real-time news, data, and analysis package offered by Refinitiv, a world leader in market data. 
Add on the world-class support, and it's not hard to see why Metastock has won the Stocks and Commodities Reader's Choice Award for 26 consecutive years. To find out more about Metastock and how it can help your trading, visit metastock.com or contact a product professional via phone, email, or chat. Okay, we got about 14 seconds, but I don't think everyone's ready on that side. So give me just one second whilst we check on that. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Hunter Smith with Metastock, and I'd like to welcome you to uh, another International Market Roundup. Today is August 7th. Uh, we are already into August. Welcome, August, even though uh, it's under strange circumstances. Um, today, we have a very, very special guest. Before we get into that too much, I'll just get the legal disclaimer out of the way. This demonstration is designed to instruct you on using Metastock and accompanying software plugins. It's not a recommendation to buy or sell, but rather guidelines to interpreting and using these specific indicators and features within the software. The information, software, and techniques presented today should only be used by investors who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Metastock shall have no liability for any investment decisions based on the use of our software, any trading strategies, or information provided in connection with the company. Got the legal stuff out of the way. I am pleased to have Mr. Tim Strayton uh, on this uh, this afternoon. Tim, how are you doing? I'm fine. Yeah, it's lovely weather here in Zurich. Uh, been for a swim before, and uh, yeah, I'm facing with crazy markets, uh, but uh, there's a lot uh, getting ready to happen. Uh, we've seen some dramatic moves, uh, especially in the, especially in the precious metal markets. And uh, equity markets looks as if uh, they just uh, are going one way. Mm -hmm. So, uh, shall we get on with it? Uh, yeah, yeah. I probably... was uh, just taking a look at, uh, at Dow. Um, today, the Dow closed uh, 46 points up, which we're pretty darn close to uh, a high that we hit um on six eight which was kind of um uh, you know we hit that in, after the obviously the the large drop but on six eight uh, we were there about a month ago and uh, we're, we're reaching that level it could prove to be a very interesting support or resistance level resistance right now of course um what do you think about the u.s indices tim well, yeah, I, uh, I've just, what I've done now, I've just put up two charts. Uh, I put the NASDAQ 100 against the S&P. I don't know if you see that now. Yeah, uh, so it should prompt you right now to change over uh, and share your screen. Yeah, there we go. I see a couple okay. of charts. Right. Um, okay, well, it's interesting now because if you look what's happened to the NASDAQ, we've broken through uh, <clears throat> the previous high which we had, uh, that was, uh, it was in February, 19th of February, around the 9,700 level and broke through there. And we're coming pr pretty close to a Fibonacci projection point, 61.8, which is about 11,400. I don't know if you can see that on the chart. Uh, it's crazy. I mean, the 200 day moving average, the price is, is uh, about 20% above the 200 day moving average, which is actually, it's crazy. Uh, 
So that's one thing out of the way. Whether, whether we go higher than, than that in the NASDAQ is difficult to say. I very much doubt it. I reckon soon we're going to have some sort of correction. But if you, if you look on the other side to the S&P, I just put this over here a little bit. If you look now, we're very close to where we, uh, it's a similar picture in February. Uh, just, uh, if you see, we broke through here, this 9,700 level. If you look at the S&P 500, we're getting pretty close to a similar level here, which around a three, just under three, four. So I don't know. It looks to me almost if we're going to try and break this level. And if we do, this could go to 4,100. I mean, it sounds to me absolutely crazy when you look at the fundamentals, but we're not trading fundamentals, we're trading the index. Uh, and uh, there is a there is a potential for a breakout here. How long it'll last uh, afterwards, no, I don't have no idea. It seems quite a next week could may give some action, uh, some ma <coughs> a bad move, just like we had in the precious metal market this week. So it's something to look about, something to be aware of. If we break here the, the previous high, <coughs> which you see, which is around just under the 3,400 level, uh, 3,385, then expect some fireworks, I would say. <clears throat> yeah, and it seems that it's approaching that level at, uh, uh, you know, it seems like we have a lot of cautious optimism, you know, essentially it's it's approaching that level kind of slowly. Um, I'll be interested to see what, what happens next week. Yeah, me too. Uh, the other one I want to put up is just to, is to look at the other indices, the DAX. The DAX doesn't look half so good. <clears throat> uh, German ind ind indices. Uh, if you see here, <clears throat> we had very strong momentum originally up to the uh, middle of June, and it's sort of tapered off a little bit. Uh, it doesn't look so exciting. We're also coming gradually to overbought levels in the DAX. Uh, it's not quite the same picture. <clears throat> um, but if you, but I, I reckon in the, uh, the US markets, there's still potential, speculative potential on the upside. Um, <clears throat> one other chart I'd like to look at which I've been following quite a while, is the gold ratio against the S&P uh, going back to 2008. This is the gold price in 2011 uh, against the S&P. So gold has fallen and now has, has made a, a base. Uh, and it looks as if this ratio is going towards the favor of gold. Uh, <clears throat> it's one to watch. It's had a long long basing our process going back for about the last five years. So that'll be also interesting to see what happens. <clears throat> yeah, uh, you know, relationship between silver and gold is always interesting to watch. It seems like uh, um, there's there's a lot of correlation there. Um, however, silver always kind of plays that, that backseat role to gold because most people just invest into gold. But other precious metals seem to have a, a, you know, seem to kind of follow suit normally. Yeah, and uh, this is <clears throat> what we've seen recently. The last time we were speaking with you, we had, if I remember correctly, the silver price, gold silver ratio was up to about 125. And see what's happened since then. We've come back to normal, normal levels around the 72 level. So, if you look at <clears throat> this ratio now against gold, it looks as though we're coming into some very strong support. So around the 66, 67 level. So probably uh, the potential for silver in the upside, uh, having broken through this uh, this level, uh, which 20, I think 26 and a quarter was a very strong <clears throat> resistance level. It's broken out of here. But probably, uh, for the time being, I would say we're more or less done on silver, possibly the $30.
I don't see much more right now. But uh, uh, trying to <clears throat> estimate the future of silver is very, very difficult. But you can see how volatile this market is. <clears throat> you can see for, for for decades and suddenly break out of its uh, sleep, you know, like it's done right now. So this is a very high spe highly speculative market. You've got to have nerves of steel to trade this. So. <clears throat> Yeah, you know, I, I feel like there are much better investments uh, uh, than silver right now. Um, uh, you know, with with that last move since, you know, the last time you were on, obviously we hit uh, hit a high with silver, but it seems like that move is definitely exhausted and uh, um, looks to be flat in the lining here shortly, coming back down to normal. Um, do you, so here's a question uh, about your trading philosophy. Do you even, trade speculatively on those types of markets on on silver like uh with silver are, are you using maybe uh straddle uh, uh option strategies do you even trade it or do you just watch it well uh, no, uh i watch it and uh i trade it but i don't trade it i invest in in, in precious metals which are generally in gold uh but I, I when i touch gold it's probably for, i hold it for years i mean the last holding i had in Fruderans, I, the last time I purchased them was about five years ago, and recently I I liquidated about yeah about uh, fifty percent of the holdings. But uh, I just uh, I don't. It's not gold is so volatile, and uh, it's it's either you have it or you don't have it. That's what I. That's how I look at it. <clears throat> that makes um, sense. It makes sense, and uh, I I've done very well with gold doing it that way. Years ago, when I was a precious metal trader, it was different. I had to quote the whole mar uh, for everybody. It was a different situation. But for my own private investments, I, I look at it as a long-term investment. Wonderful. Yeah. And uh, if in, uh, if you're out there uh, in YouTube, if you have any stocks you want us to look at here, we, we can get around to those in just a bit. Also, if you okay. have any questions, definitely let us know. What What's right. next? Uh, what's next is uh, currencies. Uh, the only current, I just focus on the euro dollar because everyone looks at it, it's probably the most active market. Um, Interesting, if you go back to 2008 and you draw a falling trend line, we're tickling that level right now, 117.85. Uh, we're way above the 200 day moving average. It looks short term overbought, we are RSI up around 70. So uh, but it seems to me if the dollar is having trouble here, uh, also against other currencies, against the Swiss franc and also the sterling. So uh, this is also an interesting level to watch right now. So uh, either we, we're going to break through here, which is which is possible, <clears throat> or we're going to retrace down. But generally, the outlook looks not so good for the dollar. Although it's short term, it's over. It's oversold the dollar. Um, it's something, something to look at. To look at today. <clears throat> This would probably coincide with the strengthening of the precious metals. So the outlook for gold still looks pretty good. Uh, then I would probably reckon it would make sense to see the oil or dollar probably advance somewhere towards the 133 level, something like that. But I think also next week we, we shall see which way we're going to go. <clears throat> I don't know if yes. you have any ideas on that, but uh, to yeah, me, it no, I, I feel like you're right. Um, it is kind of at a, a pivotal level, level right now. I think next week will be kind of a, a big week for the for the euro dollar. Um, it, there, and here's the thing: is is I, I'm always curious about uh, currencies versus the dollar because the uh, you know our market has been such speculation for quite a while now. Um, and it seems like a, a lot of other international, um, uh, uh, you know, a, a lot of other international uh, economies have been a lot more realistic with 
with their actual trading, um, you know, versus the U.S. currently. Yeah. So I always worry about a little bit of false inflation there. Yeah, well, this is this is the point. Uh, <clears throat> the big what we don't know is within the interest rates because uh, just to <clears throat> draw your attention to Switzerland, the property market here. Uh, UBS has just brought out a report that they see in the next quarter um, uh, a bubble in property property here. And the reason for that is obviously with we have a negative interest rates uh, here. If you have, have uh, a half a percent or two, uh, three and a quarter percent negative interest rates, so this has forced people to go into other investment forms and. If you look around in Zurich, every spare pay, uh, piece of land is, is concreted over with uh, wonderful, luxurious flats. Uh, but the question is, with the people, a lot of people losing their jobs now, uh, who's going to pay for these expensive rents? Mm -hmm. So it could be that we, as the UBS thinks, that we're going to have uh, um, a blowout in prices relatively soon. Yeah, it's, it's something that uh, we worry about here uh, in the U.S. as well. We have historically low interest rates. Interest rates are not going anywhere either for a while because, uh, you know, the, we literally cannot raise interest rates right now. No one can afford uh, uh, homes as it is. But with interest rates being high, it's such, uh, or sorry, interest rates being low, it's such a good time to buy property. However, the reason that the interest rates are low is because people have very little income, uh, you know, coming in right now. So it's, it, we might reach that point where it starts negatively affecting the real estate market and actually deflating um, the value of a lot of homes just to move some inventory. Well, yes, we discussed that last time. I remember about uh, property, uh, home home offices everywhere jumping up and. Uh, this has made the, the prices for office uh, office locations uh, dive. Uh, it doesn't look so good. And then this can also <coughs> uh, affect the, the property, the residential property market here, um, especially the expensive ones, because there's less and less people being able to afford them. Right? And mm -hmm. Switzerland, I'll just give you an idea. If you were looking for a flat here, uh, a reasonable flat. You've got to <coughs> you've got to put one to, to one point two million Swiss francs on the table, uh, and they don't only look at your uh, how much money you have. They, they look at the banks if they're going to give you a mortgage, uh, your income, your from from your uh, from your job. Um, if they go back to see what your average earnings were the last three years, and if they were. Well, under a certain level, you just don't get the mortgage. Mm -hmm. So, uh, tough situation. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it really is. Um, you know, it's it's uh, to to be a property owner right now. Uh, you know, especially commercial property, which we did talk about last time. Um, you know, it could be it could be kind of uh, you know, kind of interesting time to see. You know, because all of all of these small businesses are, you know, obviously having an issue, even with or without bailouts. Um, uh, you know, commercial property suffering. Um, you know, I know in a lot of areas we we have very very diverse market in in the U.S. Uh, as far as our housing market, um, but uh, I mean, still, I think everyone's really taken a hit. Uh, you know, the majority of people have taken a hit on their income. So these higher end properties, uh, you know, for the real estate market, I really do foresee those getting a little bit, a little bit squeezed on price, a little bit uh, of, uh, you know, an excess of inventory as people try to pare down a little bit and, and uh, cut their overhead uh, to meet the new strange times that we've been in here, I guess, for the last geez, five months now, six months, yeah. seven months. Especially, and I, th I think also it's going to hit young people are starting out in life with jobs they will <clears throat> they'll never be able to raise the cash re required now so, so what that's going to happen to the market i don't know i i would have thought uh, we will see an implosion in property prices especially in the high 
the high uh, the segment, uh, the very expensive segment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, yeah, that that uh, you know the the upper echelon of of you know homes could, and of course this has trickle effects uh, you know into many many different industries. A lot of industries are doing very very well right now. Um, uh, you know, we've seen a big, a large rebound as far as kind of the big stocks. You know, your your Amazon, your um, uh, Home Depot, uh, you know, things of uh, of that nature, as well as not necessarily oil, but uh, oil manufacturing uh, equipment manufacturing companies have been doing very very well because they're just having to store all <laughs> the oil. Um, but yeah. they, they've been doing well as uh, as well. Again, uh, if you're out there in, in YouTube land, feel free to throw in some symbols. We'll happy to take a look at them. Uh, Tim, did you have any uh, other symbols that you want to look up? Any uh, any other instruments? Well, I uh, well, I'm if anyone wants to, uh, I, I'm ready to uh, throw up some charts. If anyone wants to look at any particular markets, I can only say one thing about. The sectors I've been following is the, the health technology has been looking pretty good. Also, uh, IT, uh, 5G uh, companies look pretty, pretty strong. Uh, airlines, it's obvious that they're, they're going nowhere. Right. Uh, although when the, when the crash came in March, I did buy some airlines and did pretty well with them, but uh, it's, I, for me, that's not a, an area you want to hold for long. It's only a of good trades. <clears throat> I, I agree there, uh, you know, literally and figuratively, they're not going anywhere. So, um, you know, I, I think that there was an initial bounce when, when airlines took the big hit, but it's not something you know, as the realism of, of new travel uh, uh, comes in, I you know I, I don't think that those are good long-term investments, even though a lot of them are very, very cheap right now. Um, let's take a look at a couple of the majors uh, here in the US. Um, let's just do yeah. Home, Home Depot, just HD. Home Depot, yeah, Home Depot, yeah, sure. Hmm. With HD, right? Hmm. Uh, correct, yes. Just, uh, just in a minute. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, here, here you've got a situation. <clears throat> if you compare that to what we looked at in the NASDAQ before, uh, where this looks pretty good. Yeah, so it's it's been in kind of a, a long term upward trend, um, you know. With uh, you know Home Depot, I guess my question is is um, when do we start looking for signs to get out of possible long uh, positions that we've been in? Okay, well I'm just doing putting in a Fibonacci retracement here, uh, uh, projection. So you see, this is I'm just taking uh, the. The breakout here. Mm -hmm. So 
actually, we're now 271.84, we're at the 23.6, we've just hit today. It looks to me, if there's still uh, fantasies the upside, uh, I could imagine around the 315 level is possible. That would be a 61.8 projection from this from this range which we had before. And, and that's really where you're you're looking at at the the top end of the range for that movement. Is that correct? I would say I would say so. Uh, looking at something else. I just put in here the percentage from the 200 day moving average. <clears throat> okay. So if you look here, this is the percentage we're away from 200 day moving average. So it's about 15%. Uh, if you look at the NASDAQ, which is now 20%, uh, obviously, it looks as if there's a little, still a little bit more room to the upside. Uh, I, I would say somewhere around the 300 to 315 level is a possible target, and that's where I would uh, I would look to get out. Okay, wonderful. Because yeah, that's it, it's it's been a strong move. It's been a strong move, and um, it's a gradual up, upward move. Uh, there's not there's very little retracement here we've had it we've had a little bit here yeah, but it's it's a constant positive move so i think there's still still i don't think it's really time to to liquidate okay so um just put in another put another rsi in there just to <clears throat> to back it up a little bit see see what that looks like well, of course, as you see, if I look at the RSI, it's also overbought. But I mean, if you look back to in May, it was also overbought. But look how it's it's stayed overbought for for a long time. So it looks as if overbought. What does that really mean? Uh, it's it's <laughs> it can be overbought for for weeks and weeks, you know. Yeah. Um, but I still, I still think there's uh, there's there's upside fantasy in this thing. Okay, wonderful. So I can say um, for that, it's, it's good. <clears throat> let's uh, let's take a look at another one here. Um, let's take a look at uh, TFC. Um, Trust Financial, I believe it is. Trust Financial. I believe exactly. what you can exactly. yeah, at the very top it, where you're at right now, just type in yeah. uh, TFC and then hit enter. TFC. Okay. There we go. Yeah. I'm curious well, your 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 thoughts on this because we you know we, we, through the last few uh, market roundups that we've done you know kind of a a theme has been not to uh, try to catch these massive up movements to to have safe investments uh, also to look for stocks that were not hit as hard um, when uh, the initial uh, uh, crash happened this stock is kind of interesting to me. Um, because we are approaching kind of a 200 period moving average. It's been, has a very, very short trend up. Here's to see what you think about it. 
Okay. Uh, it's a weird one. It, it looks to me similar to some of the oil stocks I've been following. Uh, <clears throat> This is a weird chart. <laughs> <laughs> <This is> a... <laughs> uh, Thought well, I'd throw you a curveball. <laughs> uh, right, yeah. Well, if you if you compare that to uh, the Home Depot, I would prefer to stick with the Home Depot myself, but this is a wild one. Uh, wait a minute. Let's have a look. <clears throat> yeah, what should I say? Uh, what should I say about that? Uh, personally, I, I I, I would I wouldn't touch it with a barge pole, but <laughs> um, it's one of those. It, it doesn't look so clear to me. Uh, it's um, it's a weird one. I guess that move right there, that last high uh, in June that was hit. That's. Yeah. The concern that I have with the stock, and the reason I kind of want your input on it, is we haven't gotten close to that since. So is that a um, is that uh, a a uh, recouping the majority of the move and then just flatlining, or do you feel like there might be a, another breakout here soon? Well, if you, if you look what's happened up to, until uh, see uh, since March, what has happened? We've had rising higher highs and higher lows okay which is actually up to now up to this level has been pretty good but this pattern has broken down uh, i would have expected if this was going to carry on that would we be now much higher mm -hmm. okay it, it, i mean it's looked pretty constructive all the way up here now here i would have thought well okay um, it's time to go, but it seems to be, uh, it's lost momentum completely. Mm -hmm. It's it's struggling along here, along the support level, but not really making a great deal of progress, <clears throat> which make me, makes me think uh, it's getting tired. I, I would agree with you there. Um, it, it is an interesting chart. Uh, I guess that that just kind of, you know, that that really shows that when you're in trades like this, you're trying to, you know, you're looking at this uh, uh, recoupment of that giant uh, uh, drop that it had, yes. um, you know, to, to keep your to to keep wary and to keep your stops relatively close. Um, I mean, the, the only thing I can say, you've had actually, if you look this whole period from the top to the bottom here, you've had we've gone up to 50% retracement. We broke through the 61.8 retracement, which is pretty good. Uh, I would have thought it, 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 it should have should have made some sort of positive move, and it really hasn't. I mean, if you see from, from here, we're going back to uh, uh, middle of July, it really hasn't done much. Mm -hmm. I mean, it started here to make, to, to make some move up, but it's 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 not not a fantastic move uh, i don't know i perhaps i would be missing out on that but i would i would get out of that and look for say, say a more interesting stocks where because it's it, to me it's unclear yeah pl plenty of stocks out there that are a lot more clear like you said a little bit exactly. earlier, you, you you like the Home Depot stock better than than this. <laughs> uh, well, I do, yes, I do, and uh, there's a there's a few other ones which uh, which I've been following, 
Uh, one of them is CMS, uh, show which I personally am long right of now. Just would like to bring that up. <clears throat> CMS Energy. Sorry about these charts. Uh, I was I use line charts on a weekly basis because they are they are the closing prices, you know. So. Mm -hmm. No, that that makes sense. No worries at all. Um, you know, on weekly charts, that, that makes a lot of sense, actually. Well, this is uh, where we go. This is actually, when you look at CMS Energy, this is similar to the stock we were looking at before. Uh, in a way, we've had more or less the same pattern. But it looks a little bit more constructive. <clears throat> Agreed. You're you're still. I mean, you're still posting for the last um, since April. It looks like you're still posting higher highs. Higher, higher highs. Yeah. It looks a little bit better than the one we were looking at before. The, uh, the trust financial mm -hmm. for me. Uh, I just put the seventy-eight point six trust in there. But if it So we've we've tinkled with the seventy eight point six and we've come off there, but it looks a little bit better because you've still got um, higher highs and higher lows. So the picture looks good. Where I would where I would uh, jump out here would be if we go under sixty, I would say okay, it's, uh, it's not much left. Mm -hmm. You know, if it breaks this this area here. But let's say the 61.8, if we go under there, I would, I would also liquidate. I'm still ha <clears throat> hanging in there with this stock. Um, yeah, that was actually going to be my next question was where, okay. where, do you, where do you draw the line on there? So way to, way to read my mind. <laughs> right, yes. Okay, well, I would, just, uh, I would just follow this level. I would say give it a bit of, I would say 60, I would be out. Um, and I would just hold it, I would uh, just hold in there until that is just broken. But you never, you never know. Yeah. Right. It's the wild market, and yeah, I have my stocks in there, so I just, uh, you have, I think you have to be patient with a lot of these things. I've seen some dramatic moves, and if you were too hasty, uh, you, you lose patience and you, you, you miss fantastic moves. Right. Um, next uh, symbol we have in CLH. And I believe that's going to be Norwegian cruise <laughs> line. <laughs> Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, that sounds good. Uh, what a minute. Uh, so if we do, uh, let me see here. LH. Uh, just do nclh.k. Oh, NCLH. uh dot k so that oh, was the oh, yeah. no you're fine you can actually just start typing it in right now if you wish there we go no yep. okay. just go ahead and hit enter okay oh. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> no, 
Oh, uh, I think that this is almost a, a, dead, a dead cat balance, you might say. Yeah, this is uh, this is one we get quite often. Actually. Okay. Um, right. Okay. Well, uh, I don't have to put any indicators in here because this is this is pretty clear to me just looking at it. It's it's had an attempt to recover and failed. Dry. This is look at this, and then it's failed to recognize. I also quite honestly. Uh, I don't see much hope for this guy. I really don't. Yeah, I uh, I couldn't agree more on this on this um, one. It, it looks half dead to me. Yes. <laughs> it's... Yeah, that one. That one is a bit it's, of a rough one. It's a, well. It's yeah. It, it had an attempt when everything else was going up. But obviously, the fundamentals look so bad. Uh, and just it's just uh, it's dying i i, I and the, <clears throat> this area cruise lines anything to do with uh, transport in general it's, it looks a bit tough these companies must be losing uh, money i was hearing that the u.s united airlines were losing 43 million bucks a day i mean i don't know how long they can uh, carry on doing that but, but it's probably similar with cruise lines <clears throat> Yeah, it's uh, most all cruise lines, you know, and kind of the initial thought was uh, the, let's see here, the, um, the, the cruise lines that the transportations, et cetera, would bounce back in a short period of time. And um, I think as this goes on and on and on and on, I just, uh, I, I, I think it's, it's just draining a lot of these uh, transports significantly. Yeah, uh, they're running. They're running out of cash, and uh, they probably won't get any refinancing. Uh, I can understand that. I would never refi. If I was a bank, I would never uh, lend money to uh, to a company where <clears throat> it's obvious that they never generate an income. Mm -hmm. Got absolutely no chance. So I would I would give that one a miss. So. Okay. Let's uh, move on to the next one, which is FLSR. FLSR. I don't see that one. FLSR. Um, let's see. I can't find any FLSR there. Let's see. FLSR. I'm doing a quick symbol search here. Okay. No, it's not the, okay. All right. So uh, we'll go ahead and move on to the next one. Uh, Greg, if you find the, okay, there we go. FSLR. FSLR. Let's take a look at FSLR. FSLR. Let me take a look. Just go ahead and do FSLR.O. Okay. It's uh, first solar, looks like is what it is. Oh, yes. Yeah, I knew this. FSLR.O. Perfect. Yeah, okay. Okay. Now, this, I've been trading this stuff a long time ago. Well, that looks like a pretty great move to me. Got to be happy with it today, at least. It looks, yeah, it's uh, first solar. Yeah, I I remember trading this long time ago. Uh, yeah, well, <laughs> yeah. Uh, This goes back a long time. We've been up here to 300, in 2008, we were up to uh, $315. Uh, 
and now 72 minus 3. So it looks a very speculative stock. <clears throat> um, Seems like there's been a lot of a lot of price action around where it's at currently. This last move, exactly, exactly. Yeah, it looks here to me. One has to keep an eye because we're approaching now. This level here has always bounced off more or less. You see, mm -hmm. since we're going back uh, 2012, where just around the level, it's t it's broken out a little bit, but it didn't close above. So uh, <clears throat> it's it's in an area where it seems to me there's a lot of pretty lot of a lot of resistance. Yeah, it's it's been a great move uh, since yeah. since May, but uh, you it's know, so in looking nice. like looking at this, this level is um, it's been contested multiple times it was contested in 2016 it was contest, uh, contested in 2018 um, and each time it either bounced right off of the current price or mm -hmm. it got a little bit of for uh above for a couple of days and then got pushed back well, down it's, exactly it's interesting it's it's uh, it's just at the moment on a daily basis you've got an rsi is over at 76 so it's a very uh, if I had the stock, I would, I would either buy a put on it. If I had the stock, now let's say I bought this at around uh, forty dollars and I still had it, I would, I would say, okay, there's a chance it breaks out. Certainly, there's a chance it breaks out. If if I was long uh, at a lower level, I'd say the best thing is to buy an uh, at the money put, say a seventy put. And hold on to the stock because then I'm protected. But I also had it does, if it does break out and we go back to these um, these in, like, ballistic levels we had back in 2008, I'm still in there. So I, that's what my recommendation is. It looks to me as if it's going to have trouble here, but you never know. If the fund, fundamentals are good for this company, which I haven't looked at. Uh, then you, we might see some crazy that's a That's a very good strategy. Um, it's a very good strategy. Um, let's take a look at, uh, let's see here, just check in chat. Um, digital turbine, uh, digital turbine, which is APPS dot O. APPS dot O. Okay. Hmm. Very interesting move the last it couple of weeks. This looks good. Okay, we're going back to 2008. It's a similar situation. <clears throat> okay, we had a we had a high back in 2008. The area was at 3250, and now 3258. Uh, with these moves. Uh, such a a massive price action in such a short time. Of course, it's it's almost like a bitcoin. You know, you never know where it's going to stop. Um, but <clears throat> if you were watching this stock back at the beginning of the year, you would have seen here that we did have a breakout. So. This would have been the area to, to go in, and that was in around uh, six dollars. Uh, we had a similar move here. If I look at this here, 
we had another breakout. So, uh, if anyone asks you what to do now, it's difficult to say because uh, it's absolutely, it's perpendicular, you know, it's, it's going up, so it's going to the moon. Uh, it's not the best time to do anything. Uh, if you haven't got it and you're looking at it going up, this is very dangerous because uh, it's pin money, maybe. <laughs> just don't know where you're going to do it. Um, one had in the past two clear levels where one could have brought this stuff and done pretty well with it. But now, uh, to me, it's too dangerous. Uh, if I hadn't, if someone's asking, should I buy it now? I would say, if if you want to risk it, you have a go. Uh, but I would, I would uh, say it's, it doesn't look quite right to me. Right. It doesn't look right. Yeah. Full disclosure. I actually, so I, I'm uh, currently long on this, and I I uh, bought in four days ago, I believe. Okay. And, um, about uh, let's see yesterday and today i've i've looked at uh, this and said well oh, that's good but <laughs> it's a it, large move you know it is a large move yeah and uh, i've always with these sort of things i find i've always taken profits and when i've when i've had a move like that i've always got out and it, i've always been happy sometimes i could have held on but uh, i've run very well over the last over many years, especially in the precious metal markets. I made a lot of money in precious metals, but I was never greedy. Well, when I had a, a good profit, I took it and I was always ready in cash for the next move. Uh, and here you had two wonderful moves. If you've been following this, I mean, I'm sure there's hundreds of similar situations like we have here in other stocks, right? where it's pretty clear what happened. When this broke here, it was clear you just had to buy this stuff. Here it's not so clear. If 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 I had been in in this uh, in this stock, I would have probably sold out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, it's just I'm happy just to, to let the others have take take some of the profit. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Maybe uh, if you if you maybe. ask me, I may be I may be completely wrong. Uh, um, but this is the way I I look at the markets. I'm always happy. I'm never I never regret having taken the profit. Yeah, the what That's ifs me. will will drive you nuts. Yeah, they they really will. All right, mm -hmm. let's do uh, let's do uh, one more. Okay. Uh, UPWK.O. I love how when when you start uh, when you personally when you start a, a, a analysis on a chart you start off by zooming pretty much all the way out to get kind of the general feel of the movement of the yeah. stock. I think that's great. That's that's the as I go back as long as I can uh, to see see what was going on. And this this is interesting because we've had actually it's only a short time period, uh, uh, but but even so, if I look at this. Um, It's been down to uh, about six, I think. Another about five five dollars. We're now fourteen six. Um, okay, if I just look, say a retracement on this. Uh, 
We're right at the 61.8. We've been up here and bounced back off. Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> but generally it doesn't look so bad because um, we've broken this. We've broken this downtrend here in May. Um, it looks still constructive, I would say. Um, <clears throat> Well, and you had that break above as well, and then you have about a month of consolidation throughout May, and then June the move back up. Um, it did hit that that yeah. fib line very hard, though. It did. It did hit it and bounce right back off it. Off it. Now. We were at that was up to about uh, seventeen and a half, and we're now back down to forty eight. Yes, it, it looks as if it's. Uh, also, if you go back here, you had also levels where you've got resistance resistance here. If you go back to these highs back in in uh, June two thousand and nineteen. Mm -hmm. uh, so, short term, it looks as though there's a barrier here. <clears throat> so it's probably uh, time to take profits. Mm -hmm. Looks like. <clears throat> Agreed. All right. Uh, yeah. Let's do this, Tim. Um, okay. <clears throat> so it, in wrapping up here, um, why don't you tell the, the people out there in, in YouTube land how to get a hold of you? Um, oh, just to preface right before you do that, um, you're actually a, a guest of ours uh, this next weekend for the uh, APAC Summit. Um, that is correct, yes. Yeah, which we have uh, we have five speakers. Uh, it's going to be a great five hours. It starts at uh, eight o'clock uh, New York time, eight o'clock uh, p.m. New York, right. eight a.m. Singapore time. Okay. Uh, you're going to be uh, a, a guest of ours. I'm excited to have you talk there. Looks yes, I'm I'm uh, looking forward to that. And what I will be focusing on, on is uh, yeah not uh, charts generally but trading psychology and uh, allocation of funds to trading uh, i made the experience been selling meta stock since i think 1999 and a, a lot of people come in and buy the software um, it's like buying an instrument uh, they go away with it um, but they haven't had any uh, education on how to use it mm -hmm. and, uh, a lot of people a lot of people have bought it though they're going to get get rich quick it just doesn't work that way and uh, they get disappointed so it's uh, uh, you have to devote a lot of time if you want to earn money constantly in this business it's uh, it's like everything else it requires a uh, dedication uh, and hard work it, it is a process not an event <laughs> exactly exactly it's 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 like the the markets. Uh, it's uh, the topping process is not an event. It's uh, yeah, it, it takes time. Right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so a couple of ways that that uh, so uh, a couple of ways people can get a hold of you. Um, admin at metastockswiss.ch. That is correct. Um, you can get me on there. Uh, I also have a website called uh, stockloss.ch that's been running since 1994. Um, uh, either of those, admin at stockloss.ch or admin at metastockswiss, uh, you can always get hold of me. Uh, and uh, be happy to uh, reply to any questions. And Tim, for, for those of you out there, Tim does a lot of education. Um, so he's very, very good at training people how to trade and, you know, we're going to get to see a lot more of his methodology um, uh, this next week as well in his philosophy on trading. So we're excited for that. If you haven't registered for the online trader summit yet, um, go ahead and, and do so. We'll put that uh, information on how to register up on the screen. Um, Tim, thank you so much. It was a Okay, it was yeah, a it's a pleasure, Hunter. And uh, look forward to seeing you next week. Huh? Yeah, I appreciate you spending your uh, your evening with us. And you have oh, it's a great, it's great fun. Always <laughs> love it. <laughs>
Yeah, you have a uh, wonderful weekend. Everyone out there in YouTube land, thank you for joining us. Please let us know if you have any questions. Feel free to contact him as well. Um, thanks for hanging around with us and, and looking at some stocks. I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. Uh, and as always, happy trading. Hey, thanks, sir. See you. See you, Ron. Bye-bye. Okay, quick note. Uh, I don't think Hunter actually mentioned during that presentation that if you want to um, attend the APAC Summit, go to metastock.com. On the homepage, there's a big old banner right on the top, and just click on that, and you can register right there. Also, a uh, point of clarification, it will begin on Friday evening, the 14th Eastern Time at about 6 p.m. I'm not sure. I think about uh, 8 p.m., and it begins at 8 a.m., on Saturday the 15th in Singapore. So we welcome people from all nations. And of course it is an APAC summit and most of the presenters and likely attendees are uh, set, uh, focused in that area of the world. So that's why there's maybe a little time issue. And we just want our American, North American clients to not get messed up when they go. All right, so I think that's about it. Thank you so much for attending today. Metastock.com, click the banner on top and have a great weekend.